The second reason is what I'm telling you now. What they have received as gospel is not gospel. There are so many things today that resemble gospel, but they are not gospel. So many messages packaged correctly. They sound like gospel. They look like the gospel. They resemble the gospel. But they are not the gospel. Let me give you an analogy. Suppose you have malaria. What is the current uh, medicine for malaria? What is it? Huh? Someone say what? Ah, I don't know this one you are talking about. Lonat. Okay. Let's say let's say Lonat. And you take something that resembles Lonat. Something that looks like lonat. Actually the same size as lonat. In fact, the same packaging as lonat. But that thing is not lonat. Will it solve the problem? There are many messages that resemble the gospel. You know, sometimes we look at some of these false teachers. You don't see, well, there are some, what they say are obviously lies. Those ones are not the problem. But there are some others you look at what they say. You will see that it seems it is exactly what the Bible is talking about. That problem puts some of us to pray again. To say, Father, we are I remember I had got that body for the first time, 2010. Because I must confess that when I look at some of these messages, they are not too different from what we are talking about. Is it not true that the Bible says that we shall prosper? Is it not true? Is it true or is it not true? Is it not true that the Bible says we shall be blessed with all blessings? Is it not true? But where is the problem? And the Lord begin to show certain things to me. You know, The gospel contains so many elements and all the elements are important. The gospel, for example, I'm just giving you some example, tells us that Jesus was born of a virgin. Very, very important. The gospel tells us the miracles that Jesus did. Very, very important. As you read the gospel, you will see his parables and teaching. Very, very important. When you read the gospel, you see how Jesus died 
And he rose again. Very important. But we discover that as we present the gospel, right from the beginning of the gospel, right from the first church, there was a subtle fight. A fight against an aspect of the gospel. That fight started even when Jesus was alive. Let me give you an example. The Bible said that Jesus one day when he told them Matthew chapter 16 who do people say I am? Do you remember that story? Do you remember that story? Let's turn to that passage. Matthew chapter 16. Jesus was saying, who do people say I am? We remember the story that Jesus and the disciple didn't answer. I mean, they answered, they said so many things. And then he said, but who, who do you say I am? Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. But my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you will lose on earth shall be loosed on earth. Then he charged the disciples that they should tell no man that it was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Verse 22, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be far from thee, Lord, that this shall not be unto thee. And so on. Let me stop there. Peter and the disciples were comfortable of Jesus as being the son of God. They were comfortable before the miracles that Jesus was doing and his parable. They were comfortable to recognize him as the son of the living God. Then when Jesus said he must suffer, he must die on the cross and suffer, they took offense. The disciples had no problem with Jesus being born of a virgin. They had no problem talking about his miracles and parables. But they had problem to think that Jesus would die on the cross. And I discovered that a few times in the life of the Lord, the fact that Jesus said that he would go to the cross to die was the only thing they could not accept. They would have preferred Jesus. A Jesus that is a savior. That we do miracles. That we manifest the power of God. But will not go to the cross.
that thing go on. In fact, when he died, Paul said the Philippians that many people are the enemies of the cross. Do you remember? These were preachers. They will preach his power. They will talk of his love. They will talk of his blessings. But they are uncomfortable to talk of his cross. Are you still with me this morning? Are you with me? Paul said, let's turn to 1 Corinthians. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto all that are saved, what is it? The power of God. It says, let, let's read verse 23. No, let me start from verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness. What is Paul saying? Paul is telling us in this passage that. The power of God is manifest through the cross of Christ. In fact, Paul said, let me read the verse 17. Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non-effect. The aspect of the gospel that we are told to emphasize for the power of God to manifest, to transform lives and to transform our environment is the emphasis on the cross of Christ. In fact, what we call the cross of Christ, the Bible says, is what is used to circumcise our heart. Peter wanted the gospel without the suffering of Christ. The Jews, we are told here, they took offense at the gospel. What was the reason? Because of the cross. That's why we are told in that chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians that we read that Christ crucified, verse 23, we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness. Do you know that the only reason why the Jews rejected Jesus was because he died on the cross? The Greeks, to them it is foolishness. In fact, do you know that the world is comfortable quoting the quotes of Jesus? Recognize him as a great man. Many leadership theories today are built around this example. But yet, they would rather we are silent on his death on the cross. The 
there seems to be a conspiracy to accept everything about Jesus except his death on the cross. In fact, many Christian books today, they teach Christian principles, but they are very silent on the finished work of Christ on the cross. That's why the Bible says, Christ crucified is the stumbling block to the Jews. If we say Christ doing miracles, the Jews have no problem. If we say Christ born of a virgin, it's not too much of a problem for the Jews. But crucified. Do you know that if we remove the cross aspect from the gospel, Muslims will not have any problems with the gospel. The real issue that is the power of the gospel is that cross aspect. That is why any time Jesus was talking of the gospel, of the gospel, he said, whosoever will be my disciple should do what? What should he do? Deny himself to do what? Take up his cross. Every time he's talking about it, that was his emphasis. As if there was nothing else. But that is the aspect the Jews see as a stumbling block. When we are talking of miracles, do you know that the Quran respects Jesus to the point of saying that he did more miracles than the one we are talking of in the Bible? According to the Bible, Jesus was how old when he did the first miracle? How old? 30 years. When he transformed water to wine. Was that so? And the Bible said that was the first miracle. The Quran recounted that Jesus began to do miracles from the cradle. In fact, when he was a baby and he was lying down, then a bed was flowing. He commanded him. You know, he a soil, a clay was given to him. And he just walked like this. And he became a bear. And the bear flew away. He started doing miracles from the cradle, according to the Quran. So which one recognized more miracle? The Bible or the Quran? Which one? The Quran. So the, the, the miracles were not the issues. In fact, they said the Bible is diminishing Jesus as far as miracles are concerned. He started as a baby, infant, in the cradle. And the Bible said he started doing miracles at the age of 30. No, that is not the miracle. In fact, the virgin birth was not much of a problem to Muslims. They said, in fact, because Jesus did not have a, have a father, he had a mother. Adam had, did not have father, did not have mother. So to say Jesus did not have father, it's not an issue. But the issue is this. You are saying that Jesus died on the cross. The Quran says no. Jesus was so powerful. When they came to arrest him, he just did a miracle. And he disappeared. It was Judas that was there. And his own face was put upon the face of Judas. So Jesus was not crucified. It was Judas. Which one is more sensational? If I wish it was like that. It's, it's very, very sensational. Why? The fundamental thing Islam is rejecting. Is this matter of the cross? Islam is not the first to reject it. The Jews, that was their stumbling block. Even the disciples, that was their problem. Jesus, can't we do this gospel without the cross? Some ministers in the first in the first um, in the first century. Let's see that Philippians again. Paul was saying. 
that some were enemies of the cross. Philippians chapter 3. They were enemies of the cross. Right from the first century. Enemies of the cross. I know why. God gave us grace. We put it in a small book. I think they are available here. Because for four years we were studying. What is the issue? Many of these preachings that are exciting but cannot transform hearts. They emphasize everything. But subtly, they de-emphasize the cross. Are you following me? Any time the cross is de-emphasized, the message cannot transform the heart. It cannot produce Christian. It cannot. You know, if you preach, let me give you an example. Prosperity. There's a way to preach it. And the cross of Christ is emphasized. But if you preach it, the same words, but the cross of Christ is not brought in. The matter of the cross is not brought in. You will think it is the same message. Yes, the same words, but different spirit. That is the problem with many of these preachings. Do you know there is a way to preach healing? And the cross of Christ is at the center. And there is a way to preach healing. And the cross is de-emphasized. Who understands what I'm talking about? I see some hands up. You see, there are many aspects of the gospel, but there's an aspect that God uses to do the work of circumcising the heart. The aspect that God is using to circumcise your heart is the aspect of the cross. And that is the aspect that Jesus was emphasizing. That was why anytime somebody wants to come after him, he will always say, you must take up the cross and follow me. As if that was the only way Yes, that is the only way. It can be put in different way. But the emphasis must be on the cross. But there's a way to preach a gospel. A way that is very exciting. A way that, is, that makes you very happy. A way that gives you some kind of hope, frivolous hope that seems like the gospel. It says everything but it cannot circumcise your heart. That's why the Bible says, Paul said, when I preach the gospel, let me read it again. That's First Corinthians chapter 1, <coughs> excuse me, verse 17. He said, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, so that the cross of Christ, so that the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. That is, there is a way to package the gospel. It sounds wise. It sounds logical. It sounds like a good package. But it robs the gospel of the power of the cross. Paul said, I will not do that. 
Once the power of the cross is shrouded, the gospel that you preach is not the gospel. You tell people so many things that make them happy, but it cannot circumcise their heart. Many gospels that are going on around us cannot circumcise their heart. Brother, watch. An Arab. One day one say, ah, well, if I have understood the Christianity now and I also understand Islam. We say, well, what is Christianity? He said, do you know, for six months, every Sunday, I will sit before my uh, uh, satellite dish, television, and I was listening to men of God, Christian preachers all over the world. Sometimes I listened up to, up to six messages and I was taking notes. And you know what I discovered? Christianity is about making it and living well on earth. But Islam is about how to get to heaven. Is that Christianity? You know the Christianity has listened to? The Christianity without the cross. And that was what we preach most. One day I was in a taxi in Lagos. I was going to the airport. And I started talking to this taxi driver, a Muslim. And God gave me a very striking message. Ah, this man said, I didn't know this is Christianity. I now understand. Yeah, but I will drop in about. Can you send me to somebody that can explain to me? I said, Where, which area do you live? He told me the area. I said, Ah, that area, I don't know it very well, so I don't know a church. Then I said, Okay, anyway, um, look for a church. He said, I don't know a good church. Then I said, Okay, you know, on television, they saw they, some people preach. So just take a telephone number and call them. Then the man said, Those people preach on television? I said, Yes. Ah. He said, what they are saying is not what you are saying. <laughs> a Muslim. He said, what they are saying is not what you are saying. I was embarrassed. For a man to say that,